Welcome back to Slick Talk. I'm your host, Joe. Today's topic is going beyond the OLM. So we're going to be focusing on oil life monitors, what they are, how they help folks in structuring their vehicle maintenance, but also how oil analysis can take things even a step further. Further. We also have a very important announcement as well as a listener appreciation segment. But let's get to the announcement first because to be quite honest, this is something I'm very excited about. Mark your calendars because on May 31st, I will be doing a live stream interview with Max of Max Revs. You can find his YouTube channel. Go ahead and give him a subscription right now. We will be doing a live stream interview covering all things used oil analysis. Max is interested in the topic because he caters to a lot of Porsche owners, um, especially Cayman owners, and his channel gives them an opportunity to showcase their vehicle, talk about their maintenance, how they got into Porsches in the first place, um, you know, unique things about their cars, how they drive them, the whole nine. And naturally, oil analysis can play a role for some of them. And Max was able to learn about Blackstone, and he just wanted to delve deeper into our process, what we can find, how our services can be so crucial in vehicle maintenance. So this is going to be a live stream interview, which means that you're encouraged Encourage to join us live. The time will be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Max is broadcasting from London, so it will be 8 p.m. UK time. But you can join us live. You can submit questions for Max or myself, and we'll be eager to tackle those. So please do join us live. But if you need to listen to the show later on, you will, of course, be able to catch it on his YouTube channel as well as Blackstone Laboratories' YouTube channel, and we will be uploading the interview to this podcast as well. So we're very excited for that to come up. Once again, the date is May 31st. And now let's delve into our customer appreciation segment. So this is going to be a recurring segment. In the past, we've had, you know, episodes featured on customer cars, um, really interesting things that happened to them. Just see episode seven, Tales from the Owner, um, where we featured a WRX. But on this particular episode, we wanted to give a shout out to our friend of the program, as well as reoccurring customer, JC. He is the owner of a 2010 Dodge Charger RT. And he volunteered his car to be featured on this episode, and we're glad he did. So the first sample from JC's charger came with 174,000 miles on the odometer. And just to give you a little bit of insight into how things looked, this car looked fantastic from the jump. Um, Really impressive wear numbers. JC sampled a 5,000 mile oil run and things just already shaped up very nicely with averages, especially going to wear metals. We're looking at things almost all in the single digits. The one metal that wasn't was copper, uh, checking in at 13 parts per million. But just for a little bit of insight, average for this engine is 30. And he had a low reading not only there, but pretty much across the board. And this was after a 5,000 mile run. JC decided to sample another 5,000 mile run. And really the results, you know, we talk about trends all the time on this program. And for good reason, because we learn the most about a car when you get more than one data point. We want to see how things look over time. Because just like when you go to the doctor's office, the doctor is not going to know everything about you just from one visit. They might have some strong inclinations about how you are doing at that point in time, but not seeing what came before, not knowing exactly what's going to come after, you have kind of a limited diagnostic, and it can be that way in oil analysis as well. We want to see how things go over time because that's really going to tell a stronger narrative. And in JC's sample history, we saw things looking really fantastic across the board. We go to the second sample here, and we have pretty much stability across the board, except you did have a decrease in that copper level. And then he checks back again, this latest sample coming in April of 2020. We have copper on a steady decline. We have cylinder area metals, aluminum, chrome, iron, really holding nice and steady. And really that's 
just what we want here because he's sampling consistent oil change intervals. And we find that cylinder area metals, you know, iron in particular, will track really closely with miles. So in a healthy engine, you want to see stability across the board. And JC has had exactly that. And there's also been a lack of contamination. There's been you know, oil holding up very well as far as keeping its viscosity. So really want to give a shout out to JC, his excellent maintenance of the car, and the fact that he's been doing a great job of checking in on consistent intervals on a consistent basis. That really helps us and makes our job so easy because we get really structured data points and trends are easy to follow. You know, we have all the details. We have all the mileage plainly on the page. We don't have to make any guesses. We don't have to wonder, oh, well, maybe this interval was quite a bit longer. Maybe that makes sense of an increase in wear or, you know, oh, we don't know if there's been, you know, repair work, this, that, and the other. No, in this case, we have all the information we need. We're able to put together a narrative quite nicely. And of course, with numbers that look as good as these, our job is easy. And now on to the main event, going beyond the OLM. So OLM is an abbreviation for Oil Life Monitor. And nowadays, it's pretty unusual, I would say, if you drive a car that doesn't have one. Um, as of early 2019, at least 16 automakers um, are going to offer a maintenance reminder system. And usually that reminder is some sort of OLM. And OLMs are going to look at operation. Um, they often use an algorithm that will take into account things like idle time, uh, how hot the oil is getting, uh, RPMs, um, you know, how often the engine's operating under load, so on and so forth. And it adds all that information up and then will uh, spit out usually a percentage if you go through like your heads up display um, in, in your car you can usually flip through and find a percentage some cars will just tell you to change the oil at least the ones i've had experience with uh, i believe my 2017 accord and the chevy silverado i drive now um, they both had a percentage we want to go beyond the OLM because in oil analysis, we're kind of speaking a different language. Uh, operation, you know, the way a car is used is really good to know um, on our end because it just plays a, a vital role in making sense of certain results. But operation alone doesn't necessarily call for an oil change. For example, if you do uh, 50% uh, towing. Um, during an oil run, you, know, you have some sort of truck or SUV, something, you know, pretty much made to haul. And you do a lot of towing. Let's say it's more than 50%. Maybe it's the entire oil run. Well, so let's say, for example, that triggers something in the algorithm to drop that oil life percentage down and call for an oil change. Well, we're not necessarily going to see the same thing on our end. In fact, usually we find that when customers change the oil due to a low OLM percentage, we often find they could run the oil longer, um, well past, in fact. So oil analysis is a really good complement to the OLM. And if you want to make use of both and save some money, you can always take a sample through the dipstick um, without changing the oil. You can do that using a hand pump. Um, we actually sell one through our website and it's going to use really small quarter inch uh, tubing that's going to go down the dipstick tube. And then you can pull up a sample and see how things look. And you can weigh our analysis in conjunction with the OLM. And if you have a low OLM percentage, you don't necessarily need to run for an oil change. You can first look and see how those results match up with our own. And just to give you an example of a situation where there could be a low OLM, but we would have no issue suggesting a longer run, we would probably be looking at a sample that had you know really healthy wear levels, either be it compared to averages or past results. We would probably also be looking at a viscosity that was you know in the expected range, you know contamination that didn't seem to be changing the engine's wear condition anytime soon. And even in some cases, you know, we might not be looking at a sample that's even quite that good, but if the oil still seems to be doing its job of cleaning and lubricating the engine, you know, we have really good indications of effective air, or oil filtration, and so on. Well, that's a really common scenario where even despite a low OLM, we'd have no issue telling folks to run longer. 
But going even a step further, some manufacturers, such as Mercedes and BMW, they'll offer what's called oil quality sensors. And again, these are going to go even further than OLM. Um, they're going to measure things like the dielectric constant of the used oil. And why is that important? Well, changes in the dielectric constant may indicate the presence of contamination, such as coolant, or it could indicate oxidation of the oil. Again, oil analysis, though, is going to go beyond that, and it's useful because, sure, there might be a change in the dielectric constant, but does that necessarily mean that wear levels are high? Does that mean, you know, say there is contamination? Well, how much and what is it? If it's fuel, for example, is it a small amount that could be from normal use? Something that uh, the engine might be able to get rid of if you sampled, say, just after a short trip or after only idling to warm the engine. And... There are going to be situations where, let's say, there is coolant in the oil. Obviously not a good thing, but you want to know, is it a coolant leak that is ongoing? And if it is ongoing, is it getting worse by the day? Or is it something that's stable and you're just trying to keep tabs on until you're able to make repairs? Well, all of those scenarios, oil analysis is going to be very helpful um, in addition to whatever oil quality sensor, oil life monitor mileage counter, you name it, we're going to be able to go into other areas and we're also going to name names. Um, you know, we're not just going to tell you to change the oil because of contamination. We're going to give you the exact contamination that we found. We're going to, as trends build, we're going to look at is contamination clearly getting worse? Is it getting better? If you made repairs, let's say, um, you fixed a coolant leak. Well, there can certainly be technology that will detect the contamination, but looking at whether situations are going from bad to worse or vice versa, that's where used oil analysis is really going to be able to play a crucial role in complementing whatever technology um, your car comes with. So to sum up, I would say that oil life monitors or any maintenance uh, reminder technology out there, we're certainly not here to say that's technology you should ignore or even that it's bad. In fact, it's really neat all the things that you can rely on when it comes to your car's computer. And that's certainly helpful. Um, but oil analysis is going to go a step further. We're also going to really kind of speak a different language. Um, as to telling you how the car is doing. So you can use these things in conjunction or you can also end up stretching your oil change interval well past whatever the OLM or otherwise is telling you. So use these things together, use them apart, whatever works best for you. We just like to inform our customers that often oil analysis is going to be able to help you get the most out of every oil change every time. And before we let you go, just another reminder that our live stream with Max Revs will be on YouTube on May 31st. That's going to be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go ahead and subscribe to Max's channel right now, and that way you'll be on track to catch the video when it drops. If you're unable to tune in on the 31st, though, we will be uploading the video to our YouTube channel. We will also be uploading the audio to Slick Talk. And we do encourage you, though, to try and catch the live stream because that way we can interact. You can drop whatever questions questions you might have, um, be it for Max's um, audience, or if you're more interested in just Blackstone, just used oil analysis, um, we're of course going to be answering those questions too. So we really look forward to that show. Be sure to tune in and thanks for listening.